Well, today we're going to be looking at Proterozoic origins, including the Wapme origin and stromatolites. What are they and how did they form? So stick around. Well, welcome back to our series on historical geology. And in this video, we are looking at the Proterozoic Eon, which stretches from 2.5 billion years ago till about 530 million years ago using the conventional dating systems. Now, the Proterozoic is itself broken up into three eras called the Paleo-Proterozoic, the Meso-Proterozoic, and the Neo-Proterozoic. Now, this is really easy to remember, folks, because Paleo, well, it just means old, Meso means middle, and Neo means new. How easy is that? Now, keep in mind that the combination of the Hadean, uh, Kean, and Proterozoic eons, they're often just sort of lumped together and informally called the Precambrian. You're probably familiar with that. Now, for those that missed the first video, there'll be a link in the description, so make sure you go and watch that first. Now, in this video, we'll look at an early Proterozoic orogeny, or mountain building event, and stromatolites. Now, remember, I'll be using conventional scientific models, including the conventional time scale in this series, addressing the main points from a young age creationist perspective towards the end of the video. Now, you'll remember from our last video that most scientists today believe that our present continents formed through a process of accretion from much smaller terrains. Now, of course, I also pointed out that this paper threw a spanner in the works when it questioned the modern style arc to terrain accretion model. Now, to keep things simple, however, I'm just going to stick with the scientific consensus. So, the Wapme origin. It's located in the Canadian Shield, and it's thought to be one of the earliest mountain building events in Earth's history. Now, right now, there is no topography, and the site is relatively flat. But the presence of metamorphic rocks and a truncated fold and thrust belt in the ancient rocks does seem to suggest that a mountain belt was at one time located there. Now, the term orogeny, well, it just refers to the process of mountain building, and the term origin, well, it simply refers to the body of rock that was deformed by those processes. Now, the Watme origin is located on what is known as the Slave Province, which is thought to be a late Archean Craton having a size of about 800 kilometers by 500 kilometers, so quite small compared to modern Cretons. Of course, today this ancient Craton is itself sutured, or at least scientists think so, to other smaller Cretons that together constitute the modern Canadian Shield. Now, this mountain building event is thought to have occurred about 2 billion years ago at the beginning of the Proterozoic Eon during the Paleo-Proterozoic era, when an island arc, which is essentially a string of submarine volcanoes produced by plate tectonic activity, when it collided with the Archean slave province. This example is used in textbooks because the processes involved seem to indicate that modern plate tectonic processes were apparently at work in the Paleo-Proterozoic. Now, of particular interest to me is the presence of stromatolites in the same area. According to the conventional view, before the island arc collided with the slave Craton, the west coast of that Craton hosted a continental shelf. Now this shallow water environment was home to cyanobacterial communities that collectively produced small mud domes we call stromatolites. So cyanobacteria are photosynthetic organisms that get their energy from sun through photosynthesis. Now it is thought that in the process of metabolizing, these cyanobacterial communities caused lime mud called micrite to precipitate directly out of the water column. These particles eventually became stuck in the EPS bacterial sheets, just think bacterial goo, and that hindered the photosynthetic process. Now this forced those photosynthetic communities to move up towards the sunlight to continue photosynthesis, and that left behind a single lamination. Now over time, you end up with a laminated mud dome called a stromatolite. 
Now today, stromatolites are very rare, although they can be found in Shark Bay in Western Australia, as well as a few other places. But keep in mind that these modern forms are still quite different from Proterozoic forms. As it turns out, stromatolites are found throughout the Archean and Proterozoic rock record, all over the world, sometimes reaching thicknesses of many meters, with multiple horizons of meter-thick stromatolites appearing throughout kilometer-thick sections of sediment. It's astounding. Okay, so now we want to connect everything that we've just learned with biblical truth. Now keep in mind that the interpretation that I'm about to present, it's based on the evidence found in Scripture. It's not scientific evidence. But I believe it is authoritative evidence, a conclusion that I'm sure some of you will understandably disagree with. So, to start with, it is important to appreciate that apart from bacteria and algae, no other life forms are fossilized in these rocks, or in fact coeval protozoic rocks from all over the world. So that means no fish, no trilobites, no sponges, and not even any shelled organisms. That's right, not a single shell has been found in thousands of feet thick sediment just like this from all over the world. And nothing, nada, zero, zilch, I think you get the idea. It's for that reason that almost all young age creation scientists believe that these rocks, along with the stromatolites, were deposited during the creation week before any larger organisms were even created. Now, this does present some difficulties. How do you get multiple levels of bacterially induced stromatolites growing in just a few days? Now, as a consolation, some secular scientists think that the growth of the stromatolites from this location, it didn't require cyanobacteria. In other words, the water chemistry was enough to cause this limestone layering. But this still does not alleviate the time problem. And there are other glitches as well. If our larger continents like North America formed through the accretion of smaller cratons, then how do we move and suture cratons, grow multiple levels of stromatolites through kilometer thick sediments, and then have a mountain chain both rise up and get eroded down all in six ordinary days or less? Well, scripture does provide some keys. For example, in Genesis 1.9, God says, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. Now, this is a clear manipulation of liquid, which interestingly enough, it seems to be coalescing into a single body of water under the influence of gravity. Now, next the text says, and let the dry land appear. And this seems to indicate, given the context, sort of an upward vertical movement and a subsequent shaping of that which was hidden under the waters. In other words, the creation week does not seem to have been a series of static events. It seems rather to have been very dynamic. The growth of the vegetation from verse 11 in Genesis 1 really seems to bear this out. It says, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding their seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. Personally, I think of creation week dynamically. Now, the Earth started off with some basic parts that were created ex nihilo, but these parts were then shaped and fashioned throughout creation week, giving Earth its mature form. It is entirely possible that each stage in the Earth's maturation was even dependent on a prior secondary stage. And this would explain the building of mature continents from smaller land masses. Now, in a similar way, the atmosphere may have been created as photosynthetic microbes that made the stromatolites produced Earth's oxygen. Now, answers in Genesis, Andrew Snelling has postulated something like this when he says, regarding the formation of the Earth's atmosphere, it is also likely that in addition to the convective circulation in the mantle, bringing heat to the Earth's surface, it would also have brought gases to be released above it and accumulate as the atmosphere. So what I am suggesting here then is a creation week that consistently differentiated or separated out one natural system from another until all Earth's systems were fully functional. 
Now this is a concept that should immediately cause one's theological ears to prick up. You see, throughout the Bible, God is constantly separating things out. He separates out Eve from Adam, Abraham from the pagans, Israel from the nations, David from his brothers, and the church from the world. Separating out one thing from another is very important biblically. Now, significantly, all of this, it cannot be explained using natural laws. It was a miracle that requires faith to believe. Now, God does not mince his words when he clearly describes how much time was involved in Genesis 1. And he also does this in Exodus 20.11 and again in Exodus 30.17, where he says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Now, accepting this, it is neither illogical or contradictory, at least for Christians. After all, is it not entirely possible for God to do exactly what I have suggested? Now, for those interested, I do have a four-part series devoted to mature creationism, and you'll find a link to part one in the description. Now, the videos are a bit old and a bit clunky now, but I think you'll get the gist. Okay, so next time, we're going to continue our little foray into the Proterozoic by looking at the Meso and Neoproterozoic, as well as the enigmatic Ediacara biota. So that's all from me, Ken Carlson here at Creation for Beginners. Look, if you thought this was an interesting video in any way, then please share it right now on your social media platforms. Don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, you can subscribe and ring the bell for easier access to more videos as they come up. And as always, there's a link in the description uh, where you can give if you feel like it. That's always appreciated. Okay, thank you. We'll see you next time.